Welcome to the Yukon at North 61. You ever want to do something and then you decide, oh my goodness, I need to talk about something different. I went out today with my 1900 in 9.3 by 62 and realized after just being pummeled on the bench that I should really talk about recoil and the forces that contribute to recoil. Back up 9.3 by 62. This is a Husqvarna 1900. Really nice little gun. Okay, 9.3 by 62 is a pretty solid medium. That was a 270 grain bullet at about 2,500 feet per second. So that gives you a fair bit of momentum and it's only a six and three quarter pound rifle plus scope. But the thing that really I want you to notice is that upward flip of the barrel. That upward flip of the barrel, now it's not only just coming back on your shoulder, but it's hitting you in the face. It's actually raising your face up, accelerating your brain, and that creates an intense feeling of, uh, of recoil. And uh, so, no, so take a look at that again. And then I don't know how good this comparison is. And... So Newton taught us that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And what are the actions? The action is the bullet weight and the speed gives you the momentum going forward plus the the powder charge turns into gas and it goes out at 6,000 feet per second so those two things added together give you your recoil energy so what did the JBM site tell us well it told us that that little 6.8 pound rifle with scope 30 odd six with two 20 grain bullets was uh, recoiling with about 30.2 uh, foot-pounds of energy because it was knocking that rifle back 16.9 feet per second. So that, that 6.8 pound rifle coming back at 16.9 feet per second equals 30.2 foot pounds of energy. Um, and you know, that's significant. Now the 9.3 by 62 with a 270 grain bullet at about 2400 is knocking an eight pound rifle scope and rifle together at 16.5 feet per second giving you about 34 which is about 12 percent more but the felt recoil by my body was 50 percent more maybe more like the 30 on six i could shoot all day that uh that 270 grain bullet which is only going you know only only having 12 percent more recoil theoretically seemed a lot, lot heavier. And I think to figure that out, you need to take a look at Scott's, at stock design. So let's take a look at that. So let's take a look at a stock from yesteryear, which was designed uh, so you can go low and use open sights, like really nicely with open sights. So you can see that that stock drops and it drops about an inch and a quarter or so. So that drop means that when this rifle recoils, instead of going straight back, it rocks up. And when it rocks up, it takes your head with it. Now, as a former person who boxed, when you get hit in the jaw, your head it accelerates, your brain decelerates, it wants to stay where it is. You get your brain knocking around your skull. That's not good. It's not a good feeling. And it's not a good feeling when you're on the bench or shooting from prone either, when that rock comes up so that accentuates recoil so instead of 34 foot pounds of energy it felt like i was getting hit with at least 50. okay now what about this forbes 24b so this was designed totally for a scope and if you take a look at the drop of comb it's about zero maybe it's just a quarter of an inch or less or maybe an eighth of an inch and uh so that has much less of that rocking action. So most of that 30 foot pounds that it's recoiling with is coming straight back. So there's very little of this. And you can see that in the video, that's almost no flip. So 
my shoulder can take lots. I mean, even at my present state of decrepitude, uh, you know, I've worked up to probably, you know, doing 180 pound benches. So 33 pounds, I could do that all day long. My head, I, I don't know if it was Tyson Fury or somebody said 25 pounds in the right place will knock you out. Well, you're getting a percentage of that 35 pounds with a 9.3 by 62 coming right into your head. That's not that's not good. Here I'm getting a far less percentage because I've got, you know, zero drop of comb because this gun is designed for scope use. And the other advantage of that is you've got really fast up uptake with the scope. And the other thing is that's a very round, it's a lot of surface area there. So even that slight amount that you do get up, you've got this nice little comb in there that means that it's nicely distributed across your face. So I love, Melvin Forbes is a genius. This is a beautiful stock design for dealing with recoil, and it's why these ultralight rifles were easy to use. Another uh, firearm that's almost got laughably accentuated recoil, and is about as much as I'd like to handle, at 45 foot-pounds or so at the top loads, is this 450 Marlin. Um, not only does it have the drop, although it's got a decently thick comb, it's got this straight back lever, which wraps you in the finger every time you shoot it. So from the bench, you have to hold it like this and do all sorts of crazy things. When you're hunting, you don't notice it. But, uh, you know, the firearms of, of, of yesteryear, people talked about the ferocious recoil of the 405. Part of it is they didn't have the money to shoot. Guys like my father couldn't shoot like I shoot. He could with a 22, he could, but with a big rifle, he just couldn't afford it. And I reload, and I've got more disposable income. So I shot thousands of rounds where he never could do that. Uh, you know, even Army recruits had to have limited shooting, so they would talk about the incredible recoil of the 30 odd six. And, uh, you know, part of it was those old Springfields, again, had that ancient uh, drop at comb so that they could use open sights. Uh, even the old 303s were, you know, had that drop and accentuated recoil. But they were in the 20s, you know, for, for foot pounds of, of energy because they were heavy. Um, this is at 45 and it's, it's a rock and, and a roller, which is why I don't mind People complained about these early guide guns having this porting. Any little bit to reduce the recoil, I'm happy with. And I mean, in a really efficient, this isn't efficient. It's made more to kind of reduce the muzzle flip, which is really smart because that's what really accentuates recoil. Uh, the modern recoil brakes can cut a lot of that gas power so you can get maybe a 30, 40% reduction in, in, re in actual recoil but a lot more noise, so you gotta pick your poison. But if I was going to, uh, you know, my th my 350, my thir 358 Winchester in the Savage 99 was designed for open sights. It really kicks. And it's got a hard steel butt plate, or yeah, steel, steel butt plate. My 358 Norma, which is a, actually a, a branded as a Norma rifle, has almost zero drop at comb. Uh, it's much like, uh, the design is much like that, the Forbes. And I can shoot that thing all day. And the 358 uh, Winchester, which has probably, you know, maybe 40% uh, less recoil, is much, much harder to shoot. So if you want to shoot a heavy caliber rifle, take a look at stock design. I'd rather shoot a Bolt 458 Winchester than this little 450 Marlin, although it's a sweet little gun to carry. I can handle it, but that's about the top because a lot of that recoil is coming right into your head. Thank God for the ports. I think the ports make about a 10% difference. So uh, take a look at, at, at your stock designs and, and see how those change the, the actual recoil. So the numbers are one thing. The way it impacts your body is something else. So as always, thanks for watching. Have a good day.